Hello, I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGovTV, I'm here to discuss Proposition U, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 8th. The city generally requires developers of market rate housing of 10 units or more to provide affordable housing. A developer can meet this requirement in one of three ways. One, pay an affordable housing fee. Two, construct off-site affordable housing. Or three, construct on-site affordable housing. An on-site rental unit counts as affordable for a low-income household if it is affordable for households earning up to 55% of the area median income. An on-site rental unit counts as affordable for a middle-income household if it is affordable for households earning up to 100% of the area median income. The city uses federal income standards to determine the maximum allowable rent levels for the affordable units. The rent is updated each year. Proposition U would change the requirements for developers who build affordable on-site housing. It would increase the income eligibility limit for on-site rental units for all new and existing affordable housing units. Under Proposition U, any rental unit counting toward the affordable housing requirement must be available to households earning up to 110% of the area median income. Proposition U would increase the gross income a household could have to be eligible for affordable housing from 55% to 110% of area median income. It would also set the rent for a unit at 30% of the household's gross income as long as that household earns up to 110% of area median income. This proposal applies retroactively to rental units built under the affordable housing program. The rental price for each unit would be calculated annually based on the household's gross income. If you vote yes, you want to increase the income eligibility limit for on-site rental units for all new and existing affordable housing units to make them affordable for households earning up to 110% of the area median income. If you vote no, you do not want to make these changes. I'm here with Leah Pimentel, campaign manager for Yes on You and a proponent of the measure. We're also joined by Peter Cohen, co-director of the San Francisco Council of Community Housing Organizations and an opponent of Proposition U. Thank you both for being here. We're gonna start with some opening remarks and we'll begin with you, Leah. Thank you. In the face of the worst housing shortage that San Francisco has ever seen, the city has rightfully focused on resources for low income to have affordable housing. But as a result, San Francisco's middle class, many people like myself, have been largely ignored. They're struggling with the high cost of market rate housing, but currently do not qualify based upon the AMI limits. If you make 60 thousand dollars or above you do not qualify these residents are teachers artists construction workers food service workers and mothers and parents that are being pushed out of san francisco proposition U will help families like myself and others stay in the city that they love because we all deserve to stay in san francisco and add value thank you Leah. opening remarks peter Yes, um, I think we need to start with who actually put this measure on the ballot. This measure was designed by and put on the ballot by the San Francisco Realtors Association. The campaign for the measure is being funded by the National Association of Realtors and the California Association of Realtors. Question is, what do the realtors have such a great interest in San Francisco in what is essentially changing the city's inclusionary housing policy, which was established back in 2002 by then Supervisor Mark Leno? What this measure does effectively is reverse the measure that was just passed by 68% of voters in June of this year, Proposition C, which increased our city's requirement on private developers to provide affordable units. We increased it to 25% of the units they have to provide, but also most importantly, they now have to provide both low and middle income units. This measure would eliminate the low income units and make all inclusionary for middle income. Thank you, Peter. So our first question, increasing the amount of people that would be eligible for affordable housing, how exactly is that going to affect our housing crisis? Is it going to help it or hurt it, Peter? It's important to remember it doesn't increase the people who are eligible for affordable housing. There's no new affordable housing units that are created by Proposition U. Developers have to create the exact number of units. What it means is that they can target the pricing for the units to a higher class of people than they currently do. 
As I mentioned, we currently have, as of this past June's Proposition C, which was passed by voters, two tiers, a low-income portion of inclusionary and a middle-income portion. The planning department was asked by the Department of Elections to opine on this measure, and they called it very simply. This is eliminating the two tiers and creating a single tier of inclusionary just for middle income. So it doesn't create any new housing opportunities. It just changes who gets them. Same question to you, Leah. Yes, so this proposition would increase the income limit for those who are making $60,000 to $100,000. Those are your middle class people, like myself. I grew up as a middle class San Franciscan. Every Christmas and holiday, my mother worked because they were middle income. They didn't qualify for anything, so she had to work for time and a half and overtime on every holiday. My father worked at an usher at the Giants game as well just to make ends meet. They didn't qualify for affordable housing, discount recology, or any programs for their children, and they barely survived in San Francisco. This will allow San Francisco not to be a two-tier city where you're low income and you're high income. Middle income individuals are working class San Franciscans that add value. This is taking 2% of the housing stock and the adding the income limit to allow those who are able to pay a little bit more to add to the affordable housing developments to make sure that they're able to survive in San Francisco. Many of the families that were pregnant with myself have left San Francisco because they're middle class and can no longer afford to stay here. Thank you, Leah. My next question is, if Proposition U passes and we increase the amount of people who are eligible for this affordable housing, how do we ensure that there's still enough housing for our lowest income neighbors? Yes. Um, so this proposition will increase the income limit amount on the AMI limit. Currently a family of four, the lowest income amount is around 54,000. Many San Franciscans who are on the edge, it would allow them to qualify. So it wouldn't be taking away from the low income, it's adding for our middle income San Franciscan so that they are able to stay in San Francisco. We're a very diverse city and it allows for that diversity in housing and resources from for them as well. Same question to you, Peter. Sure, the way it increases housing for middle income families is by taking it away from low income families. And that's inherently the cynical part of this measure is that it pits now families against each other based on their income levels. In the current inclusionary housing policy the city has, we have a portion that is dedicated for middle income households for a family of four that's about $100,000 to $110,000 a year. That exists currently. What this measure would do is take the portion that's dedicated for low-income service worker families and eliminate that and allow middle-income families to have all of the pie. Thank you. Closing statements. Uh, Leah, we'll start with you. Yes. A thriving city depends on depends upon qualified teachers to help our students, skilled nurses to care for the sick, and first responders to save our lives. But our approach to housing has caused a crisis for middle-income families. They do not have resources. As a result, between 2009 and 2015, San Franciscans lost over 15,000 middle-income residents from San Francisco. If this continues, we will be a two-tier city of the rich and the poor. What will happen to our middle income? Do they not deserve to live in San Francisco? I believe they do. They're people like myself, my family, and many of the people that I know in San Francisco. In order to preserve our middle class and also engage with our low income, we need to pass Proposition U to help our middle class stay in San Francisco because they're families just like me. Thank you, Leah. Peter. Unfortunately, what this measure also does is it exacerbates the displacement crisis we've been having in San Francisco. And that displacement crisis has been no worse than in the African American and Latino communities. 110% AMI, which is what Proposition U would make all inclusionary housing priced for, is actually above what the African American and Latino populations in San Francisco make on average. Middle income is not the same across all of our communities of San Francisco. And the terribly divisive aspect of this is the communities that need it the most to stem the tide of displacement are being priced out by the pro policy under Proposition U. 
That is why this measure is opposed by the United Educators, our teachers. It's opposed by the American Federation of Teachers at City College. It's opposed by the Labor Council, by the Coalition of San Francisco Neighborhoods, by the Neighborhood Network, by the Democratic Party. It's opposed by SPUR, which is a very centrist policy organization. This measure is not good policy. The realtors are not trying to do this in the best interests of either low or middle income San Franciscans. Thank you, Peter. And thank you both for your comments and your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 8th.